Welcome to the Simple Software Training University video number 106, Processing Existing Files Within Simple Index. In this video, we will go over the different methods and options for importing files from folders with Simple Index. This will give you the ability to import files of any type for processing and manipulating within Simple Index configurations. We'll open Simple Index first and we'll open up the sample job that we're using for this video. We'll be processing sample images that we have in these folders located in the input folder. The input options are how Simple Index imports images. If you're going to import images from a folder instead of a scanner, the first step is to select source folder. Once you've selected source folder, any files that are processed with Simple Index will be automatically pulled from the input path. The input path is located here. You can either type in a path to the location of the input folder or you can hit the set button and navigate there. Relative paths are a way to have paths that aren't unique to your computer. If you click no, it'll automatically put the path directly to the input folder in the Windows format. If you hit yes, it'll automatically create a relative path with the simple index percent commands. In this case, using percent config file folder percent, which means wherever the config file folder is located. Keep input files is a way to either keep the files that are in the input folder or delete the files in the input folder. For testing purposes, keep input files is a good option. That way you don't have to keep recopying the files back to the input folder for testing purposes. When you're actually in production though, turning off keep input files is very important. That way you don't process the same images over and over and over and over again creating duplicates on the output. Since we're testing and training, we're going to turn on keep input files for all of our training purposes. The next box is backup input files. This automatically backs up all input files, whether they be images or any other sort of file, to the backup folder. The backup path is set here and just like in the input path, we have percent config file folder percent backup, which points to this folder here. When you run a configuration with backup input files turned on, it creates a folder with the date and the time of the batch and puts the images or files exactly as they are into the backup folder. Let's run this to see what it looks like. As we can see, it's moved all the images to this folder, and the folder name is the date, at, the time, and military time. We'll delete this, cancel out of the batch. Process subfolders is a way to process subfolders of the input folder. If you run a process that has subfolders like this input folder, you notice there's no images in the root of the input folder. With process subfolders unchecked, when the jobs run, no files are processed. With process subfolders checked, it imports the images from the subfolders into the batch. It does one subfolder per batch. So first, it will process this subfolder images. Next, it will process this subfolder, and so on. Here's an example. Once it's exported, it pulls from the next folder. 
Here's the next images. And then it's on to folder three. Split multi-page files is used to split a multi-page image file into individual page image files. An example of a multi-page image file is one like this. You have one file name, healthcare samples, but 20 pages in this file. With split multi-page input files turned on, it'll split these into 20 individual image files and treat each one as a new document. With split multi-page files turned off, it treats each file as a new file and any processing that's done is only done on the first page of the multi-page file. So with split multi-page files turned off, folder one keeps all the pages in one file. So we have file one of one, page one of 20. And only the barcode was read on the first page. Even though farther on in the grouping, there's other barcodes. With split multi-page files turned on, it treats each image as a new file and processes each image for any recognition that's required. So when I run the job now, the pages are split and barcodes are tried to read on every single image of the multi-page file. Of course, this process takes longer because it's reading 20 pages of the file instead of just the first page. Now we see that multiple barcodes were read as it tried to read barcodes on every single page. Convert files to PDF is used to convert any imported files to PDF automatically. This gives you a uniform format for all the files that are imported. It's especially useful for Office documents such as PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. That way, they're all converted to PDF and all in the same format, but still have the same look as the original. Here's the original Word document. It'll look identical when converted, but it will be a PDF. Keep input files does need to be turned off in this situation. Otherwise, it'll pull in the PDF files as well as the Office documents, as both of those types are possible to import in Simple Index. As you see, it's converting these to PDF, then deleting the Office documents, then importing them. Now you see the same files as PDF, but with the same look as the original document. Max files per batch is a way to restrict how many images are pulled in at one time. By default, it's set to 5,000. Zero is the option that you select to import an infinite number of files from the input folder. Let's set this to one as an example, and then set it to a folder that has many files in it. Even though there's much more than one file in this input folder, It'll only pull in one file at a time per batch, similar to the way that it processes the subfolders individually. So here we only have the one file. Max files per batch is mainly used to avoid processing very, very large sets of images at once.
You generally don't want to process more than 500 files per a configuration batch. If you do, it can cause memory errors as all these images must be stored in memory temporarily and can overflow your memory if set to too high of a number or processing too many images at once. If you're never going to have more than 500 images in your input folder, then you can keep this set to 5,000 without worry. The PDF input conversion is used to convert incoming PDF files to TIFF format. TIFF is required for all automatic processing within Simple Index, whether it be barcode, OCR, or any sort of other automatic processing. With no conversion set as the PDF input conversion, any images that are imported in PDF format that require automatic recognition are temporarily converted to TIFF for the recognition to take place, but the original PDF is kept. Save embedded images pulls out the embedded image within the PDF file. This is generally the fastest way to convert PDF files, but not all PDF files have images that are formatted in the same way. So sometimes the image doesn't come out properly when you use this option. If you ever have an improperly formatted image after this, try it, the other two options, which is convert to black and white TIFF or convert to color TIFF. Convert to black and white TIFF converts all PDFs to a black and white TIFF, whether they be color, grayscale, or black and white. Convert to color TIFF converts all PDFs using their original color format. So if it's a color file, it'll stay in a color TIFF. Grayscale will stay in a grayscale TIFF. And black and white will stay in a black and white TIFF. The PDF X and Y resolutions are how the image is converted via the resolution. You can take a 300 DPI PDF and convert it to 200 DPI or vice versa or any combination really. Generally you want to try to keep the PDF resolution to the same resolution as the original PDF to avoid any sort of distortion that can occur. The PDF to TIFF conversion does take a bit of time. If you can import TIFF files when you're doing automatic recognition instead of PDF files, you can get much faster processing time. The input file types or mask is how to restrict which types of files are imported with Simple Index. With star selected, any files in the input folder will be imported, but you can restrict what files are imported automatically. So if we pull from our all folder, but we only want to pull TIFF and PDF files, we can do that. We put the file extension without any spaces or periods, then a comma and then the next file extension that we want to import. We'll set it for the all folder. When we run this, only the TIFF and PDF files are imported. If we scroll through, checking the image file name, we can see that there are only TIFF and PDF files. The last batch time field allows you to only import files after a certain modified date. For example, this file was modified on December 23, 2010. If I want to only import files after that date, I can do that. The max files per batch must be set to zero, and in the advanced options, save job file after each batch must be checked. Then we can set the last batch time to one day before the modified date. And it'll only pull in files after this modified date. We also want to set it to the proper folder. 
And when we run the job, it only pulls in those files. Once the batch is released, the date is automatically set to the last batch time run. That way, if you process again, the same files aren't processed. There are also some additional input options under the Advanced tab. The first is Run Job Until Input Folder is Empty. This is very good when using the Max Files Per Batch or the Process Subfolders option. That way, the batches are run over and over and over again until all the images in the input folder are gone, whether they only be processing a few amount of images from the input folder or processing each subfolder at one time. It'll keep going. The remove empty subfolders after processing checkbox is used in conjunction with process subfolders. That way any subfolders where there's no images any longer are automatically deleted. The sort subfolders by date modified and sort files by date modifying are used to change the way that the order of the imported files are imported. By default, they're imported alphabetically. But if you sort the subfolders by date modified, they'll automatically be imported oldest and newest. That's the end of the Simple Software Training University video number 106. Processing existing files with Simple Index. We've seen how to properly configure and use the import process in Simple Index for any files that you have on your computer to be indexed and saved.